We met long years ago in the Vale of Bleeding Hearts. I arrived first, stood silent amidst those dancing flowers, crimson lanterns in the dark. I still remember the feeling of that light illuminating my face, reflecting off the delicate silver mail draped about my shoulders, the steel of my braces, my breastplate. The wounds I had sustained were minimal, no bones broken. Still, familiar flames of pain licked at my shoulder, spread that tingling, aching heat across the entirety of my body. I should have been thankful, joyful, praising the Holy Father. But how could I, with my brothers lying face downwards on the cold earth, their martyred souls long since departed? So many had been lost. So few had survived. I feared that I was the last remaining. That I would be left to wander this forsaken earth alone, old and blind. <laughs> Yet with the rising of the moon, Hugh arrived. The glowing sea parted as he limped closer, faint amber light revealing a face drawn haggard with pain and regret, dark eyes haunted with flashes of steel and the shadows of fallen warriors. We were still only boys, far too young to be burdened so. A meeting of brothers was not supposed to be like this. Nothing had happened as it ought. Truly, all things do come to an end. Marius! Thank God! Where's the Grand Master? The... where... Are we truly the last? I thought perhaps the twins might have stood a chance. Or at least Mighty Dominic? We are indeed the last. But I had thought... We did all that we could do. The Order is no more. No, no. We could have stopped them. We needed only to press forward just a little further. Ten men. Against tens of thousands. <laughs> you have grown mad, my brother. We were never meant to succeed. We all knew it would end like this. Search those deepest feelings of dread. That gnawing The Order pain. does not admit defeat. That is not our purpose. Marius, you cannot allow it. What would you have me to do? What is there even to be done? Rebuild the Order. Have another Grand Master take the oath. Have you seen the bodies? The smoke? Bear the flag again. Defend the people. Never. Never? The bleeding heart seemed to grow more luminescent in the light of the moon. We were enveloped in their ruby glow, bathed in the melting light of the flowers and the stars. A breeze arose from the east, stirred at our hair and tattered white cloaks, bringing the scent of smoke and the taste of fire and blood from distant battlefields. In my mind, I could still hear the cries of the fallen. We had been so valorous. We had ridden out to defend justice, beauty, virtue, to defend our God. But the hordes had been so many. We never stood a chance of victory. It was then that I wished the Grand Master had been more honest had prepared us for this cruel reality from the beginning. So what would you have us do? If not rebuild the Order, then what? What? Tell me there's something! Oh, Hugh. This was meant from the beginning. We were never meant to win. We have ever been a symbol of something greater than ourselves. A symbol for the people to rally beneath. 
But now that our enemies have once crushed us, all hope is lost. The people have fled, lost all faith. This order must come to an end. Forever. This is not the end. Hugh, this is... This is not the end. Hope is never lost. This symbol, it still stands for something. Not for me. Not for me. So now we part. I suppose. I will be able to find you. Will I not? That I cannot say. Farewell, my brother. May the light of the three be ever with you. And with you. I can still see the despair written across his face. For one so young and hopeful to see the codes of virtue and honor and victory crumbling apart, it must have broken his spirit. There was an emptiness in his eyes, but nothing I could say or do would suffice. He would have to endure it alone. I think it was better that way. As we parted, I thought that there had been tears upon his cheek, but I could not be certain. They might have been mine. As we slowly marched out of the Vale, Hugh to the north and myself to the south, two new bleeding hearts sprung up where we had stood. Two more crimson lanterns to join in that great valley of sorrow. Now, all these years later, I stumbled across the tapestry here, in this quiet and dusty tavern. And as I look in the splendor of the splashes of color, the broad swaths of rich thread, I noticed with great surprise the tall and resilient figure of my brother, of Hugh. Whereas I have grown into a miserly old hermit, a cynical bondsman with a blind heart. He, he has actually become something. The skilled weaver depicted him leading a group of steel-clad paladins into the smoke and din of battle, riding high upon a snow-white steed, sword risen in salute to the God of Heaven, bright eyes flaming with rekindled passion for righteousness, for honor, hope. He did not bow to the fear and brokenness we shared that night in the valley. The refining fire of that battle forged him into a man greater than any that had come before, greater than any who had ever stood beneath the banner of our order. He had refused to bow in defeat, and had done what I could not. Perhaps if there were more like him in this world, bleeding hearts could be made whole.